Welcome to the Ruckus Associates SmartZone Administrator Demonstration Series for the SmartZone OS 5 release. In this course, we will show you the functionality of SmartZone OS 5 along with the basic configuration of many aspects of the controller. In this video, we will provide details on configuring wireless LAN availability within SmartZone, allowing you to limit the wireless LAN accessibility to specific times. Also, we will show you how to set up VLAN pooling which is commonly used in larger scale wireless LANs. With this ability, you can deploy different DHCP pools all within a single wireless LAN. So let's get started. Let's start with wireless LAN schedules. So within a wireless LAN, you have the ability to limit the schedule or limit the time that a wireless LAN is available. Now by default, a wireless LAN when being configured is set to always on. You have other options of always off or specific. Within the specific settings, it allows you to create a schedule limiting the amount of time or specific times in which a wireless LAN will be available to users. To set this schedule, you click on create within the wireless LAN configuration and open up the create time schedules table. The name of the schedule, as well as start times and end times can be configured by mousing over the times in which you want available. Let me demonstrate. Now within any given wireless LAN, we can go into the LAN settings and we configure it, allowing us to specify the scheduling that we want that wireless LAN to be available. Now this is down into the advanced section, so you'll go down to the advanced options of that wireless LAN. And you can see in this particular case, we already have a time schedule set. So we have it set to specific and we have a guest access during office hours selected for this particular wireless LAN. Now we have options to go in and edit this particular wireless LAN schedule by clicking on the pencil. But do know that this is scheduled or this schedule is created on a per zone basis. So if I were to have, have this applied to other wireless LANs and I were to affect or edit this schedule, it will affect the other wireless LANs that has this schedule associated with it. So I can come in here and let's say I want to keep it from being available during lunch hours as well. I can sit here and simply click on the areas in which it shows that it's scheduled or available and it toggles between available and non-available as you see there. Now we have an option also to select the whole day and make it available to users by clicking on the actual day itself. This will make all 24 hours of that specific day of the week available to users if we so choose. Now we could go into it, select the whole day, and then go out and carve out certain times in which we do not want that particular wireless LAN available. We can also toggle it on and off and so clicking and unclicking or clicking again will cause it to be unavailable or available depending on your choice. Now once we have set this schedule we can push apply here or we could go into a different wireless LAN and create our own schedule profile for it specifically as well. So we're going to get out of this one. So let's go to our team standard. We're going to configure it. And as mentioned before, it is down in the advanced options. So we're going to scroll down towards the bottom and we're going to see our time schedule available here again. We're going to go into specific and this time we're going to create one. Now notice that when we push specific because a schedule has already been configured, it's going to automatically default to that first one. We can go in and create our own specific to this wireless LAN by clicking the plus sign. At this point, we will name it. So this is office hours. We can put in a description in this that's more descriptive of this service. And then we can go in also and select certain hours of the day for this. Now, one thing to keep in mind that's very important, understand the time zone in which we are referencing. And it will tell you up at the top right here which time zone that you're going to be scheduling this for. So you'll just need to be sensitive knowing wherever these wireless LAN devices or the, wherever this wireless LAN is being broadcast, 
we want to make sure that we are appropriate based on the scheduling of that time zone and not necessarily the system time zone that we see listed up at the top right here. So we're going to head, go ahead and schedule this Monday and Wednesday. I missed the 8 to 8.30. Notice that these are in 30-minute segments. And we're going to pick Friday as well. And again, this is just an example of how we're able to limit the access of that wireless LAN based on the scheduling we have configured. We go ahead and push OK there. We will verify that the schedule profile that we have just configured is the option chosen for this wireless LAN. And then we push OK. So where all these schedules are housed within SmartZone or is under the Services and Profiles and then Access Control. Under that, we will see a Time Schedules tab that we will click on. And we can see here are the two schedules that we saw earlier in my example. Now any one of these we can click on and we can click on Configure. And we can adjust it if we so choose. So adjusting these times or adding specific times to this particular schedule is going to affect any of the wireless LANs that happen to have this schedule associated with it. Now as mentioned earlier these schedules are based on a zone basis. So if we were to click on the plus signs here you can see we have a zone X zone which is where these have been configured because when we created those within the wireless LAN, it will associate it within the zone those particular wireless LANs are a member of. However, if we have a different zone within that domain, you can notice that when we click on it, it will, can have its own schedules. Therefore, each zone needs to have its own schedule. So if you were to create a schedule within the scheduling profile area, which is in the access control section, you can go back to any wireless LAN within that zone, apply that specific schedule to that particular zone. Now once you've done so, that schedule will be applied to that specific wireless LAN, allowing it to function normally during the enabled hours. However, when a time is reached when the wireless LAN goes off, the access points will be shut down based on that schedule. Now let's next talk about VLAN pooling profiles and how those can be applied to a wireless LAN. VLAN pooling allows for you to run multiple different DHCP pools within a single wireless LAN. You'll use this on high density deployments when you have a lot of clients. The AP uses a hash algorithm to assign incoming devices to different VLAN pools. In our example, the first station connects. The AP hashes the MAC address and then the result maps it to the first configured VLAN, which happens to be VLAN 10. Once that device is associated with VLAN 10, it will receive an IP address based on that VLAN's DHCP configuration. The second station connects, and this hashed MAC address maps it to VLAN 50. This device will receive its DHCP IP address from VLAN 50. Because the hash algorithm always provides the same result, each station will always be assigned to the same VLAN. Large deployments will have enough diversity between MAC addresses to ensure the clients are evenly balanced across the pools. In a previous video, we showed you how you can enable VLAN pooling under the advanced options when creating a wireless LAN. To create a VLAN pooling profile from the Access Control VLAN Pooling tab, select the Create button. Name the profile and then add the VLANs that you want associated with this particular wireless LAN. Notice the MAC hash option is selected by default. Each VLAN pool can contain up to 32 VLANs, and a maximum of 64 VLAN pools can be created. Each wireless LAN can be configured with a single VLAN pool. Make note that the 11AC Wave 2 supports a maximum of 64 VLANs within its VLAN pool. Other AP models support up to the 32 VLANs. Let me demonstrate this for you. So under Services and Profiles, underneath Access Control, 
we go to the VLAN pooling tab. Now note that the VLAN pooling is based on a per domain basis. We're going to click on create and we're going to label this. You can add a detailed description allowing you to understand more exactly what this profile is about and then we'll go down to the VLAN section and add the VLANs. Now we can use a dash to go between various VLANs. We can put in a comma allowing for specific VLANs to be chosen and all of that is supported within the VLANs field that we see here. Now once we have put in the VLANs that we want, we push OK, and we see the VLAN pool shows up within the domain that we have selected. Now we'll go back to Wireless LANs. We will select the Wireless LAN we want to apply this pool to, and then we'll go in and press Configure. Once we have done that, we'll go down to the Advanced Options again. We can see that we have the Enable VLAN Pooling option. Right now it's disabled. We're going to enable it. And then within the VLAN Pooling, we can go into the drop-down list and we can find the one we've just created. Now, as with other options that we have when configuring a wireless LAN, we have the ability to go in and create one on the fly while creating this wireless LAN by clicking on the plus button and we would populate the information here and know this would show up again back to the services profiles access control underneath the VLAN pooling tab. In this case we're going to look at the VLAN that we have created and then we can go and edit it actually. We can click on the edit button here which is the pencil and we can add an additional VLAN. Now do remember as well Configuring this profile and us adjusting this profile here will affect other wireless LANs that might have this particular profile associated with it. Now just note that if we make any changes here to an existing profile, we want to make sure that this does not have adverse effects to other wireless LANs that might be associated with this profile as well. We'll click Apply here. Once this is selected, we'll push OK. Now, from now on, any people that are connecting to this standard to wireless LAN will go through that hashing algorithm that will be placed into a VLAN that is based on that hashing algorithm and they will receive an IP address that is appropriate for that particular VLAN. Thank you for taking the time of watching this video of wireless LAN schedules and VLAN pools. Note that there are other videos within this series that provide you more details of SmartZone OS 5 release features and how to configure them. Thanks for watching.